Welcome back to another episode of Start This Business YouTube channel. This is the My Rental Car Journey Mini Series. And today we are dealing with another incident. But yes, we're gonna go into details and go over. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what happened, show you guys the damage, you know, of course, give you guys the story and let you know what's happening to get it fixed. Right after this, let's get it. Now we got the intro out of the way. Let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty. I know that's what you guys are here for. Of course, you guys want to know what happened. I have no idea why I'm actually speaking into this mic because it's not even hooked up to anything. Like honestly, I'm doing. I'm not even. It's not. I'm not even using my computer right now. So I have no idea why I'm speaking into this. But it's still here anyway. It looks good. So we're gonna rock with it. So yes, there was another incident, not an accident. So the reason why I'm saying an incident, not an accident, is because somebody didn't actually get in a wreck in a car accident. No one wrecked my car or anything like that. However, there was damage applied to the car. Um, so this is what happened. So you know. I had a weekend rental, gave the keys off to the young lady. See, everything seemed good. She was very, you know, very cool. You know, we had a good conversation before she went and got the car. Um, you know, and, and when I say good conversation, you know what I mean? It's, I always try to like connect with the people I'm about to rent, let rent my car. Like I always try to connect with them, have some type of conversation. If I, if I can pull out a little bit, just can get an idea like, okay, this is probably what they're gonna use my car for. But you know, all that comes out in the conversation. So I do that with all my renters. Um, with her, you know, I had a good conversation with her. You know, everything seemed good. So um, she came and got my car on a Friday. She was originally supposed to have it from Friday to Monday. So she called me on Sunday. Um, I didn't answer. I had no idea it was even her. I didn't even answer until I, I got the voice more, so, until I got her text. And then I called her back and she told me um, she locked the keys in her car. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, cool. You got you locked the keys in the car and her phone. You know, obviously I'm talking to her on the phone now. So I'm assuming she got everything out at this time. So, okay, I'm good. Glad to know everything's cool. You know what I mean? Um, however, she went on to say after that, you know, I just want to let you know, um, I did scratch the car up a little bit cause I used the hanger to, to get into the car. <sighs> all right. All right. Uh, first of all, two things of that. Number one, I have a spare key and I have triple A. Those are two options right there. I have, I have a spare key and I have triple A. Any one of those situations we could have got the car taken care of, or we could have gotten into the car if you would have reached out to me, or if she would have reached out to me and communicated. Now, she did say she left her phone in the car, which I understand. Okay, you left your phone in the car, so you couldn't get into contact with me. However, there are numerous methods that she could have used. There's other ways around that she could have, you know, gotten got in touch with me basically got to hold me she could have just contacted tutorial support and said hey this is the situation and tutorial support would have read like she there's methods that she had granted i don't know the situation like i this i'm just going off of the story like anybody can tell me anything obviously i wasn't there so whatever she tells me is what i'm assuming to be the truth um however i do feel like there was a little bit more to it obviously because i'm, I'm just like man listen here out of all the, like, there's just so many different scenarios you could have used. And especially, matter of fact, you guys aren't gonna even believe it. So let, let's, let me go back. She used the metal hanger and roll the footage. Like, let's, let me drop the footage. Dang, I don't know what they use to open this, try to open this shit up with. She said a hanger, but I don't know what hanger's doing this shit. Wait, that's in there. Hey, that's in there. Now, come on, man. Like, I am really, really hoping that at some point in time, if you guys ever get locked out of a vehicle, ever get locked out of a car, and you're using a metal hanger, there has to be at some point in time in that situation where she noticed the damage that she was doing to the car. And when I hold up, 
this is not working. Like, you know what I mean? This is not working. Like, there's just so many. She could have called a locksmith. Like, there's just so many things I, I, I just, to me, in my mind, again, I can't put myself in everybody's shoes, so I don't know what happened. But I'm saying in my mind, I'll be like, hold on, we're damaging the car. Let me find out another option, because this is obviously, this isn't going to turn out well if I keep going. Obviously, that didn't happen. So she kept going. And as you can see, like it was pretty significant to me. This is only to me. I feel like there was more to it. I mean, of course, because there's, I just don't see how you proceed to mess up a car that bad. At, at no point in time, something else triggered where, you know, you wanted to use another option. So that's that, you know what I mean? So she used, a, it looked like she used a crow, like a, a tire iron or something. Like I'm, I've never seen a metal hanger do that to a car before. And I've seen a lot of people a lot of people use hangers to get in cars and I've never seen it look like that or the results turn out to look like that. So that is kind of where we were at on that. So of course, uh, she sends me a picture. I get the damage or she tells me, hey, yep, I, I scratched the car a little bit. Um, okay, cool. Still at my, in my mind, I am thinking that you use the hanger. Okay, cool. It's probably a couple of little scratches. You guys just saw the video. I mean, there was a lot more than that. So. I was not expecting to see none of that until, you know, obviously the day came when I got there and I saw it. And, you know, I was, I told her, I was like, damn, I mean, you know, if you guys know me, anybody knows me in person, like I am like, there's no filter in a way. I was just, I just sometimes I just say whatever's like, whatever's there. And so the first thing I said, like, damn, you don't use a, a hanger for that. <laughs> Like you, that's, I've never seen a hanger do that before. That's what I told her. Um, and it might've came out the wrong way. Cause I was really, you know, just kind of joking, but serious in a way. Cause I was like, damn, like that was a lot. So, you know, I obviously had that conversation with her. The good thing about this was though, is the damage was more so like on the inside of the door. Like you couldn't really see it from the outside. Like you, you have to open up the door to see most of that, unless you got real close up to it, then you can obviously see it, which was a problem. So of course, you know, because I know what happened with my last incident. You guys should know by now, too, if you guys have been following this channel, that the last person, you know, first of all, went MIA on me, which it didn't matter to me anyway, because I still got the car fixed and I was going to get my car fixed. But obviously, when I looked at the damages and I felt it, like it actually, I'm not going to lie to you, like the stuff you guys see, like around the door, it looks a lot worse than what it actually is because there's really no like real internal, like deep surface stuff. It's just really like scratched the paint completely off. So really someone just needed to go up and just kind of paint it. However, you know, obviously with the door panel and everything like that, I'm thinking it was going to be, you know, anywhere from like 500 to to $1,000 maybe. That is that is my assumption. So of course, you know, the first thing I ask her is, okay, what type of deductible plan did you have? She picked the lowest one, which again, like I've said, everybody's going to do it. And of course, because you think nothing's going to happen. So of course something happened. So with me knowing that I'm saying, oh wow, well yeah, your deductible is gonna be three thousand dollars. So I'll get some quotes. I know a couple guys that do paint repair and stuff like that. I'll get a couple quotes, but this was the kicker. I said, but I really want you to because I have so many things that I'm doing right now. I don't really have the time to you know go around and, and you know do all these things. I'm, I'm doing so much as it is. I, I it's going to be hard for me, and I'm on the time limit, and I got renters coming to rent my car this week. So I told her, like, I really need you to, you know, you find some people and, you know, I'll trust your judgment. Like you find some people, you have them call me, I will talk to them. And if I like them, then we'll definitely go ahead and move forward. And I'll send my car over there so we can get it fixed. You know, she was like, like okay, cool. Let's do it. Um, obviously I had to make sure she knew, you know, if you don't do it, I will file a claim because I got to get my car fixed at the end of the day. I will file a claim. And of course, that means it's going to be $3,000 out of your pocket, which this, and I showed a point to her, like this is obviously nowhere near $3,000 worth of repairs. So it would be smart for you just to go ahead and find a person. She was like, okay, cool. I got you. Like she was real cool. Like she was, you know, from the get go, she kind of owned it, took accountability, apologized. You know what I mean? And she was real, like real up forward with it, real straightforward. And like, she was really trying to, but again, you know, anything can happen. Like when I'm standing there in front of you, of course you'll say anything to the person when you're right, when they're right there in front of you. So it's a different story when I actually walk, when we go our separate ways. And then when you have time to think to yourself or people get in your ear, like whatever you think that you're going to be able to do, that's when things change. And so that's what I was kind of worried about, but she was hitting me up. Like she was hitting me up. Um, at the end of the day, she ended up fighting someone. The guy originally, you know, the, the amount was like, 
uh, originally like $200 or something like that. And, you know, I was like, there's no way <laughs> this car is getting fixed for $200. However, I didn't want to just shoot her down because again, she was trying, she was calling, she was reaching out and I was like, okay, we'll have the guy call me and I'll talk to him and we'll go from there. Uh, the guy called me and to my surprise, I'm like, I actually, like we had a good conversation. Like, like he actually sounded, and again, I'm not a paint expert or debt repair expert, or anything like that. But because, you know, recently I've had to deal with so many issues when it comes to these things i have came became a mini like expert like even though i'm really not one i became a mini one and um so he was saying some things that i kind of knew that i just recently found out and of course i'm over here thinking oh, okay like i know what i'm talking about but it sounded familiar <laughs> like it was things that you know i've heard other people say and i was like okay so at least he kind of sounds like he knows what he's talking about and it's not just uncle bob that's about to put some paint together or or a whole bunch of white out and just kind of cover up the marks like it's not that type of it, it didn't feel like that type of situation because i even asked them like do you do mobile because this was the biggest thing to me i was not going to be inconvenienced whatsoever this is what i made clear that i'm not driving anywhere I'm not going to pick up my car. I'm not waiting anywhere. I'm not paying for any Ubers. I'm not doing any of that. Um, so, you know, it was important to me that she found someone mobile that can come to my house and actually fix it. I talked to the guy when he saw the pictures. I broke, I don't, there's there's no way. Like, this, this is not a mobile job. Like, I don't know how someone's going to be able to do this stuff and paint it and everything without it being inside of, a, you know, a shop or something like that. And that to me right there was like, okay, he's not, you know, because Uncle Bob would have figured it out. Like Uncle Bob would have pulled up with, you know, boxes and, you know, everything. But Uncle Bob would have figured out how to make it happen, you know what I mean, for that money. So the fact that he told me, you know, told me that little information, I was cool. I was satisfied. I was happy with it. So you know, I was like, you know what? This might be something we can work out. The only thing is the guy was like 45 minutes away. So I wasn't interrupting my schedule. I wasn't about to, you know, go out my way to take the car to him. So again, so once I talked to him, I felt comfortable and moving forward with him, I called her back and said, hey, yeah, he sounds legit. I want to, I think I want to move forward with him. However, he's all the way out in Union City, which I live in Marietta. If anybody knows, you know, anybody's familiar with those areas, those are pretty good drive. And this was like mid afternoon. So already we're about to hit traffic. So, and of course, if anybody knows anything about Atlanta traffic, I didn't want no parts of that. You know, I told her like, hey, you, you're gonna have to come get the car and take it out there to him. Like, you know what I mean? And it actually had to be done like to like almost like right now because I had another renter coming the next day to come get it in the morning. So I was telling her, look, I need this done before they come get it um, or else I'm gonna have to, you know, at least notate that there was dam that damage occurred to the car. I'm not gonna file the claim yet, but I'm at least gonna have to notate it so at least Toro and everybody knows before my next renter comes get the car for the next two weeks or so that you know the car there was damage in your in your visit you know in your rent there was a there was damage so she said okay cool I understand again very cooperative very cool the entire time very proactive with things. Um, and she was cool. She's like, okay, yes, yeah, so I'll come get the car. You know, I think she was working or something like that too. Or, you know what I mean? And she was like, look, you know, at the end of the day, she actually took it the way I thought the, my first, the person I got in the accident when my car was going to take it. Like she didn't even, hers was nowhere even near as worse as his, but she was so proactive with it. And she was like, yes, I'm gonna come get the car. Um, you know what I mean? Like real proactive with it. So, you know, I worked it out to, at the end of the day, it was going to be, you know, she was going to take the car and what I was going to do, I was going to have the guy, once he got done with the car, I was going to basically let the guy do the checkout process for me. I was going to, you know, I took a check, one of my pre-inspection sheets that you guys have seen in my last video. I took one out. I filled one out real quick. Um, you know, I filled everything out. I just didn't know what, you know, what the repairs was going to look like. So I had to leave that part empty and just wait till the next morning. But I filled everything out and I put it in the backseat of the car and let her go take the car and drop it off. And again, I was going to have the repairman the next morning actually do the checkout process for me. So that way I had my hands clean. I didn't have to do anything. I had to go out of my way, inconvenience, none of that. Um, however, you know, something, the more I just started thinking about it, I was like, two things can happen here. You know, one, I might just let him do it. And I really don't get an idea to get a chance to really inspect and see what he did and you know how good it was. Cause she could have really just told him anything and, um, and just got my car taken care of or just, you know, to her likings because you know, how she was paying for it. So she might've just told him anything, you know what I mean? And you know, whatever. So I was like, 
do I really trust that? And then at the same time, and another thing was, again, I take my check-in processes very serious. This is the reason why I never come out of pocket. This is the reason why I'm never going to come out of pocket and why I'm always going to have my car fixed if something happens to it because I am very, I'm very, you know, like strict on my check-in process where I'm covering myself. And, you know, I thought about it like, look, she's going to have a car for like two and a half weeks. Um, do I really just want to like go out there? Not really. I'm not going to be the one to give her the form, do the complete walk around with her, tell her all the things that she needs to know and just trust that he's going to do that. And then the car goes out for two weeks. Like I just, to me, even it just didn't seem right. It didn't, it didn't seem right. You know what I mean? And this is kind of, you know, the responsibility and part of, part of the business, you know, and it helps and it kind of, it's more reassuring. Like, I can promise you right now. Um, cause I decided to go. But I can promise you right now, the fact that I went out there, looked at the car, inspected, which he did a very great job. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I did the walk in with her, checked out, let her sign it, her meet me, all that good thing. I feel a lot better now knowing that now my car's gonna be gone for like two and a half weeks. I feel a lot better than I would have been feeling if I didn't go there this morning. Like, I probably would have been like, man, I might've been checking my tracker, making sure everything was good, you know, calling him, calling like, there's just so much like stress I probably would have had for some reason if I would have just allowed it to go that way. So for me, I just woke up the next morning and said, you know what, I'm gonna just go out there and handle it. And I wanna check it. And because this is a good op networking opportunity to where this guy may do good work and he did it for very, 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 very cheap. Like some, like very cheap. So. You know, if it worked out, then I was like, this might be someone good that I can keep, you know what I mean? Someone I can work with in the future when it comes to buying more cars or, you know, any future accidents and stuff like that. Like, this is good because he did it for a very cheap amount. So let me check it out. And sure enough, like I went out there and it looked phenomenal. Like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, it looked, it looked phenomenal. It was a very, very, very good job. Way better than I expected it was going to be. Again, because it was so cheap. I thought it was going to be, you know, I expected it was going to be like some BS. Like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I thought it was going to be some BS. But at the same time, I was like, it's only on the inside. I'm not really worried about it. Let's go ahead. Let's let's rock. So uh, at the end of the day, it worked out. Um, So this is kind of, yes, an incident did occur to my car. But at least with this situation, uh, compared to the last situation, first, I got this resolved in two days. You know, my last took me like a month and some change because I went through that long claim process. But when I just handle it like directly with her, it only took two days. And again, like shout out, man, shout out to my renter. Shout out, cause she was, she was great. She was phenomenal. Um, again, I think it's very important. Like a lot of times we complain about our renters and stuff like that, but she was great. Yes, she, she made a mistake, it costed her, which I don't have to keep beating her up. Cause I mean, she felt it, you know, she had to pay 400 or however much she had to pay to get it fixed. Exactly, I don't know exact dollar amount, um, I think it was like $450, maybe $400. She saved $2,600, you know, opposed, like going that route, she saved $2,600 instead of the claim route. But yeah, that mistake cost her. So she did feel it. Like, I'm not going to ignore it. She did feel it. But at the same time, like she was so proactive. She was doing what she, you know, what she was trying to do to, to cover herself. She wasn't worried about it. She didn't say, okay, what well, is it going to confine me or, you know, whatever. She took accountability. She handled her business. So man, I definitely want, if she gets a chance to watch it, I definitely want to shout you out because you handled your business. I appreciate you. Even though I told her that already, she knows. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was, you know, it was a good experience. And again, I wasn't inconvenienced. Like that was the most important thing to me is not only getting my car fixed, but that I wouldn't be inconvenienced. And she did not inconvenience me at all. And I got my car fixed and I was still able to meet all my future renter or the, the renter that was coming to get my car for two weeks. So again, guys, I just wanted to, you know, share this experience with you because it's a lot different from my last one. Um, just so you guys understand, like things are, again, things are going to happen with your car, but again, not everything is bad. This, this one was a, a very, a different situation. So on top of that, not only did I get my car fixed, now I actually found a, a plug on dent repairs and scratch repairs that does it for the low. So now in the future, like I can get, you know, I can get paid at the end of the day because I can get my money from Turo and then go have this guy fix it for the low low. So, you know, everything worked out for a positive, you know, it started with a negative situation. It really turned out positive. And I, you know, like I said, I can't complain. I wasn't inconvenienced at all, except this little trip that I had to go do this morning, a little farther than I normally do for my check-in process, but you know, it comes with territory. So yes, man. So respect, shout out to everybody who, who continues to support this channel. I appreciate you guys. I hope I'm finding, helping you guys find some value. 
Um, and again, I mean, at the end of the day, we're coming up on like 21 episodes. So we're kind of deep off into this. So I really hope that some of you guys have maybe even been inspired by this channel to go start your own. So um, again, I appreciate everybody. I appreciate the love and support. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. See you on the next one. Peace. No, God, please, no, 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 no!